Hello guys, uh, Shake Tutorial. Now, what we're going to be covering is, let's say you didn't have a shadow file, um, so we're picking up exactly where we left off. Um, now, to get the most out of this training series, you are going to need um, a book, and that book is the Shake 4 Compositing and Visual Effects book. Mark Perlini, I believe. Um, mainly because I'm using the files that are included on the disc. Um, so basically I'm just giving you a visual video tutorial version of his book. Um, but you will need the book, one as a reference guide and secondly for the footage, to get the most out of it anyway. Okay, so let's say we didn't have this shadow, so we're going to go ahead and delete that. And we're going to select this node and hit I. Um, that means ignore, so it's going to pretend that this node doesn't exist. Uh, and we don't have a shadow, and as you can see, without a shadow, it really doesn't look too good, doesn't look very real. You get the idea. So we want to create our own shadow, and we're going to do that using the actual robot footage. So, we're going to branch this off. We're going to grab the output of the robot, unplug it into the M, see where it comes up with the M to the uh, right hand side of the brightness node, and that will use our robot as the mask. Choose our brightness and hit I again to stop ignoring it. We go double click on over to and click on the right hand side of the brightness node to load its parameters, and where it says mask hit the arrow key. We can change it to the alpha channel this time, and change invert mask. And basically, it's um, going to darken the robot, but we can't see that because the darkness node is behind, because it's in the right-hand side of the over node, is behind our actual robot. But what we're going to do, we're going to add a couple of things. First of all, um, deselect everything and choose a transform and move 2D node. Now, if we hover over this wire, um, on the tree branch thing and hit the delete key. It's going to delete that branch and we want to plug it right in between our robot. So basically we can move our shadow and then between our move and our bright we're going to basically add a blur so that the shadow is a bit softer but we're going to do that afterwards so that we can line it up better. So double click our over two and choose the right hand side of the brightness and as you can see when we move this around we've now got a pretty cool looking shadow which uh, looks pretty cool and make sure we're on frame one and basically line it up as if it were a shadow now these are the on-screen controls which are pretty handy You want to try and line it up with the foot. Press the plus key to zoom in. Alt left click or middle drag to uh, zoom in. Do it so that it lines up. That looks cool. Okay, now so that you can see it better, a very cool. Um, technique to do is uh, if you look at these on-screen control buttons click and drag and choose this one now what that does is that the on-screen controls are now here but when we do stuff so say we moved it they disappear and then they reappear when we let go um, and then with, if you have the line through it then the on-screen controls are well they're just not there so use the disappear disappearing on-screen controls and then we need to keyframe this because if we travel forward a bit, you can see that it doesn't always line up, which sucks. So go to frame one, that's lined up quite nicely, and uh, see this key button? Click that, and that is an auto keyframe. Um, drag to where it starts to go a bit funny. Right there, I know it should be touching the feet, so they're going to drag this up. And you can see that if we drag it forward a bit, see these buttons, that little uh, nozzle there on frame 19 and the nozzle there on frame 1 that has created a keyframe.
Which ones else do we need? Oh, there. Beautiful. What about frame 60? Like that. And that should be good. Beautiful. Now click the uh, green keyframe button again, and that will turn off auto keyframing. Um, right click on the flipbook to load up some settings, and we're going to change it from um, 1 to 60 as our time range. And then hit render. That's going to generate a little flipbook just so we can see our animation. And you get the idea that it's looking pretty cool. Now, if you wanted to create a video flipbook, it's quite easy to do. If we right click on our overnode, we can go render, render disk flipbook. And it won't take too long. Set our time range again to 1 to 60. Render that out. All the other settings are fine. And as you can see, it loads up a little weird thing and it's going to pre-render and what that's going to do is going to create a little QuickTime file for us to view. So give it a bit of time, not too long. Can I tell a joke in this meantime? I don't think so, I'm not that funny. Um, and it's pretty much done now. And now we've got a little uh, QuickTime viewer, it's a Shake QuickTime viewer, this app's called. Hit the play button, we've got a nice QuickTime video. There you go. Beautiful. How long has this been going off? Alright, so I'm actually just going to cover that in this tutorial and I'm going to start breaking things down a bit more, focus on more things individually, learn some cool new stuff in each tutorial. So thank you for watching, rate, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys soon.